Tuesday. So, um, as you're probably already aware, the topics today are dynamic zoning and radial charts with Zoe Elgani and James Fox. So I'm going to start off by just giving a brief introduction to our speakers and then we'll get into the topics and after that there'll be a Q&A. So if you do have any questions throughout the, the talks, if you could just pop them into the Q&A box and we'll go through them at the end. Okay, so first off we are starting with Soa Elgani. Soa is an Information Lab consultant um, with Information Lab Ireland and um, she is also a nine-time Biz of the Day winner as well as um, a nominee for the World Data Visualization Prize 2023. So safe to say we're in good hands when it comes to learning about dynamic zoning. And following on from that, we will have James Fox, again, who's part of the Information Lab family. Uh, James joined the Information Lab in 2019 in the UK before moving over to the Information Lab Ireland in 2021. And in that time, James has worked with a variety of clients, including Immersat, London Northeastern Railway and PwC. Um, so it's safe to say he's seen a thing or two at this point, including lots and lots of radial charts. So he will take us through those um, in a little bit. So Soha, if you're ready to get going, do you want to start? Thank you for the intro. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, so we're going to be talking about dynamic zone visibility. Um, and first, I'm going to take you through why it's important. So this is a new feature that's been like introduced in the past quarter or so. And why you should care about it, mainly because if you're familiar with doing something like this, where you have two sheets, and you have a parameter that switches it, dynamic zone visibility is able to let you do something like this, but at a more advanced level where you can make things a lot more interactive. And basically I'll be showing you how to continue to add to that. And um, you can follow along. I'm just connected to the um, Superstore data set. So if you wanna follow along as I go through the steps, you easily can. Um, so to start off with, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with how doing things the old way, which would, which is really simple. You just build a map, create your parameter, which in this case, it's going to be a very simple city or state old, where well, we're just going to write state and city. And then you have your filter. Here, where you're just going to put your parameter in there, make sure you select the right one. And the key, most irritating thing about this is that you always have to make sure that it's in the same container and that your filters are actually working correctly. What we're going to do, we're going to build the two exact same maps. And I'm gonna show you how to do this in the new way where we're gonna be using, if you look at layout, the control visibility feature. So to start off with, I'm just gonna have say, we're gonna make this into a map. I just wanna see it colored by sales. So as you notice, we're gonna have two maps where we're looking at things on a state level and then we're looking at things on a city level. So here I've got my first map. I'm gonna call this map one. And then in map two, I'm just gonna duplicate this. Rename this to map two. And we're gonna just add city on detail and then instead I'm going to have my some cells be on size and change my marks card to a circle let me just make this big okay so as you can see now I've got two maps map one map two 
and I want to be able to switch between them. So instead of putting the old calculation in the filter, what we're going to do instead is we're going to have the calculation be added in details. So we're just going to call this um, city prom. And wait, before the calculation, sorry. You're just going to quickly create a parameter. You're going to call it state or scene, data type string, and just write state or the word city in there. I'm just going to show this parameter here. And then we're going to have a city parameter and a city filter parameter calculated field, and then a state. And all we're saying here is state, we'll see that's your parameter, equals, and then the value city. And then from here, we're just going to drag this and put it on your details like this in map two where it's city, and then going back to map one, we're just gonna put this date. So same calculation, just duplicate it, but instead of writing city here, we're gonna write state, and you're gonna drag this onto details. So I'm gonna create a dashboard. Make sure that things are in the same container. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my two maps in the same container. So you should be seeing something like this. And what we're going to be doing, you need to make sure that you select the right map. So for map one, I'm going to select control visibility. And here I'm going to select the state filter parameter. And then here, I'm going to select as well again, control visibility, and then I'm going to select the city parameter. So you can see straight away, this is the box that used to be the map with state, with the city map in there. And now it's gone blank and it's disappeared. And if I switch in the parameter, you can see how now it's like jump to city. And what's good, what's a key thing to know about this as well is that your text in the map disappears, where before in the old way it wouldn't. So if I just like test here, just to make it more obvious, if I switch, you can see my text now is map two, whereas before you used to have to create a dynamic title to make it clear that you're switching between the two different sheets. So that's a key advantage as well by using control visibility. Um, but now we're going to take things further and what you're going to see here. So in this example, how can you take things further? We're going to start combining dashboard actions and parameter actions. So you can see here's an example, same map, but we're here, we're going to give the user the ability to zoom into a selected state. So if, for example, I pick Texas, it's now zoomed into Texas and you can see exactly what's going on. And then when I click one of the marks, you can see it's bounced back. You're not gonna need to create any extra calculated fields to do this at all. This is all gonna be based on dashboard actions and parameter actions. So going back to this view, we're going to start adding our actions. So we're going to have to create three different dashboard actions. So the first one, and they're all going to be parameter actions. So make sure you select the change parameter value. And um, I'm just going to call this zoom in one and here we're going to want to select map one which is your state map 
and we're going to select your target parameter, which will be okay. Wait. Here you're going to need to select your state or city parameter here. And then here you're going to select your state value. So you just need to make sure that you select the correct value is what you're going to do. Okay, and then press OK. And then here we're going to select create another one, calling this zoom in two. And this is going to be for map two, which is your city. But instead of you selecting state value, you're going to make sure that you select your city. So here we're going to again select your parameter field. And under source field, you're going to select your city value. Okay. And then just before we create our third one, just quickly go to your sheet. And you're going to have to create a state parameter. So just go on your state value here on state and providence. And then, sorry, just quickly create a calculated, not sorry, create a parameter. And then from there, call this state parameter. We want a list. And we want the values to be added from, oh, make sure this is string, and make sure you add the values from state and provenance. I've already got that here. So that's all you need to do. So then in your dashboard, you're going to add a third action. Um, one sec, I'm going to have to repeat adding my actions because they haven't been added in. So like I said, we've got map one, which is going to be part one. Say your city and then just make sure you select state. And then here we're just making sure we select our city fields. And then in the third one, zoom in part three. You want the state, and then this is what is going to allow the filtering. So we're going to be selecting here your state soil province parameter and then here you're going to select state and then go okay okay and then one sec sorry okay Okay, so in your part one, just make sure that it's actually map two selected. So like you can see here, we're just selecting your map with city, and then you want your parameter and your state value, your state or city. So it can know, okay, for city, you want it to bounce and be connected to state. And then for your, <clears throat> and <clears throat> sorry, and then for your second one, it's going to be then the other way around. And we just want this to be. So then what you should be getting is the zoom in functionality 
based on that. Sometimes the dashboard actions are really just finicky. Let me just, sorry, one sec, go back to this. So what you can see here, so we've got our three parameter, our three dashboard actions. So we're gonna select the, your city map and then select your city, um, state or city, and then make sure you select your state value. Keep your current value blank and do select. And then here in the second section, you'll be doing the same thing but selecting your state map. And then here you're gonna select your city value. And by that, okay. So here you're just gonna have like, your city value is just gonna be a calculated field. My bad. And you're gonna call it just city and you're gonna just have in quotation marks the word city and make sure that you've spelt it the same and have it title case if you've got title case. And from there, you're just going to have in part three. So just to like emphasize, I just missed a step. But here you're going to, when you select your state or city parameter, you're going to select the source field be your city value, which is just that dummy calculation where we've got city in quotation marks. And then in your part three, we're just going to connect your state. And then you're just going to be like, okay, go to this state parameter that we created. And the source field is going to be state. So then you should have the ability to zoom in like shown here. Next thing of what I'm going to show you is multiple charts. So the great thing with dynamic zone visibility as well is that you can have one view and then you can show and hide more views depending on what the end user selects. So notice again, that text box has also disappeared and then that can add like more value to your prompt, more value in your analysis. So in this example, we're gonna select Texas and then you're gonna see, okay, like two charts pop up where I've got bands, and just sales over time. Like this is what's happening over time in Texas. This is overall profit quantity and sales versus like California. Okay, so again, this is easy. We're just gonna use the same map, but you're gonna need to create several different calculated fields. So I'm gonna go back to this map and you're not gonna need this value here. And instead, we're going to create a calculated field that's called filter. And in here, actually before that, we're going to need to create a calculated field called selected cells. So from here, what we're doing is we're creating a calculated field that's letting you highlight things based on the sum of cells that you pick. So here we're just going to say, if, going to be so make sure you select your state and province equals your state and province parameter then we want sales else zero end and then you're going to create a calculator field called filter and here we're just saying sum of sales is greater than or equal to window sum and then make sure you aggregate sum of selected sales and this is just going to go in your filter you're going to select true and what you're going to have to do is edit your table calculation and make sure you select state and then just make sure that just true is ticked in this box so we've got that initially and then we're just going to have to create so when we click on a state, you can see, okay, we've got bands and graphs over time. So just because of time, I'm just gonna quickly 
show you guys how this is done. I'm just putting measure names and then we're going to just select and measure values, your profit quantity and sales. And all you're going to do is in this filter, you're going to create something called a state filter param. And all you're saying here is it's just a simple calculation that you're all familiar with. The state parameter equals whatever state is selected. And you're going to make sure that's ticked on true. Because what we're doing here, we're just saying, okay, like if someone selects on um, Texas, you only want Texas values to show, for example. And then in this example here, it's like same thing, but you've got a graph over time. And all you're going to need is just to re-add your state zoom filter. And then this is when it gets a bit complicated. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to also have to create another calculation. So as you've noticed, when nothing's selected, the two charts disappear. So we're going to call this parameter does not equal none. So what you're going to say is this state, your state province parameter does not equal, and then write the word none. And that's going to be as you've noticed, a Boolean field that we're going to need. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to need, again, everything in the same container. So we're going to have a vertical container. Let me just, sorry, duplicate these sheets over time. And then your bounds. We're going to put map one, great. And then you're going to want to put horizontal container. You're going to want to make sure that your horizontal container is going to be inside your vertical container. So as you can see, the whole part's being highlighted in blue. And then I'm just going to add my overtime chart. And then let me just quickly... and you're going to add your bands again make sure it's in the same container okay cool so first thing we're going to do is we want So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to make sure that this disappears. So you're going to want to select this container here. And then on the layout, you're going to take control visibility using value, and you're going to select this option, none. And then what we're going to configure this with this. So basically, we're going to need um, several different dashboard actions. And just because I'm short on time, I'm just gonna show you how that works here. So under actions, you're only gonna need one dashboard action. That's it. Unlike the Zoom where we needed three. So here under action, you're gonna make sure that you select your bar chart. Wait. Sorry, you're going to want to select your map. And then all you're going to need to state here is your state. Again, it will just be a simple like your state parameter and the field. And then what you're going to need to do here is make sure that under clearing selection, you're going to set value to, and then you're going to write the word none. Make sure it's written the same way that you've written it in the calculated field. So if you've got N as capital, do N as capital. If not, just write it the same way and make sure you don't add spaces afterwards. And then that's all you're gonna do, all you need. And then press okay. And then you should be seeing something that looks like this. Um, that's it. Any questions? Brilliant, thanks Soha. Um, that was really comprehensive. 
So it's great to have that. Um, I know one or two people were asking if the recording would be available afterwards. It will be. It will be on Tableau's um, YouTube channel in the next few days. So all you need to do is type Tableau into YouTube and you'll find the playlist for, for this. Um, so you can kind of follow along with it if you're creating your own. Um, so that's great. Um, cool. Um, James, are you ready to go ahead? Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Soha, for that brilliant presentation. I'm sure this is going to take a lot of Tableau dashboards to the next level. I'm sure we'll see a lot more visit the days using these dynamic actions. Cool. I will just share my screen. And I'll just confirm, Kate, with you that that's correctly presented. Yeah, that's all good. Brilliant. OK. So <clears throat> let's go ahead. So thank you everyone for joining. Today, I'll be presenting about radial charts in Tableau. Now, radials in Tableau are basically just circles. And circles are really cool because circles pretty much, you know, they, they, they impact so much in our lives. You know, the orbit of the Earth around the sun, the way we tell time with analog clocks and birthday cakes. So we're going to be taking a look at how we can take circles and we can put them in Tableau. But first of all, here's a pretty cool fact that blew my mind away. So three over 3,500 years ago, in the Rind Mathematical Papyrus, which is an ancient Egyptian script, they actually calculated the area of a circle approximating pi, and they got really, really close. So what's really cool about this is that humans have been calculating circles for thousands of years. And all we're doing today is taking it from the to the next level. We're taking it from papyrus to tableau. But first, a little bit about myself. I'm James Fox. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm a senior consultant at the Information Lab. I read a lot of science fiction. I love it. And also, I'm currently trying to improve my tennis serve. So that's a little bit about me. But in terms of a little bit about radials and circles, we first need to look at the mathematics. So I'm sure many of you would have learned these things in school, but I'm just gonna do a brief refresher so we can understand the basic concepts before we dive into Tableau. So first of all, what do we know about circles? There are 360 degrees in a circle. And of course, R here, R is representing the radius, so from the center point to the edge. And on the left there, we can see we have a wedge in our circle. And we know in pink that the angle theta is just a number of degrees. So this is just an example, it's arbitrary. I'm approximating that at maybe about 40 degrees, maybe 35 degrees, but this is what we know. We know there's 360 degrees in a circle. And when we have a wedge, it will be a certain number of degrees from the origin. For those of you with a bit more of a mathematical background, you'll also know that we can measure in radians. So on the right again, we can see there's two pi radians in a circle. And on the left, I'm not going to explain that, but I love it. It's some beautiful maths, but when we have, you know, the, the, the edge, the curved edge, the arc, uh, as the same length as the radius, we have one radian. But all that matters for most people who are doing this is that 360 degrees or two pi radians is the total, nut, you know, the total degrees, the total angle within a circle. Now I mentioned radians because Tableau calculates its trigonometry functions in radians. So you can choose to do degrees or radians, and we'll get into that in a bit, but you can use either. And the reason I'm introducing this, as mentioned before, Tableau accepts radians to trigonometry, such as cosine and sine in Tableau, but we can do everything in degrees and then just convert it with the radians function before putting it in our cosine and sine. And for this presentation, I'm going to use degrees because most people understand degrees. It's got more general accessibility. And I think most people are probably more familiar with, you know, 360 degrees rather than two pi radians. So 
I'm going to introduce another concept called a unit circle. Now, a unit circle is a really cool concept. It's just a circle where the radius is one. So on the x, y coordinates, our coordinates for those points that intersect are simply one, zero or zero, one on the x axis. And a unit circle is a really cool concept because by using a unit circle, we can simplify our trigonometry down to simply the cosine of the angle or the sine of the angle. Now, there is some pre-reading, there's some background reading you can do on this. I'd suggest if you're interested in this, you can go away and you know, take a look at that. Maybe you already know this from school, maybe you've got a mathematical background, but to simplify it, all we need to know for Tableau, because in Tableau, our circles, our radius is arbitrary. Whether we have a radius of one or a radius of a billion, it doesn't actually matter because we're just visually presenting something. So we can ignore the radius. And all we need to remember is that we need to calculate the angle in pink there, that theta. And in order to calculate the point of the coordinates, we just need to cosine or sine the angle. So let's have a look at putting this into Tableau. So first of all, what we need to do is we've got our data here. So we have an item here, A, B, C. These items may be um, property that you own. It may be customers for your, your, your superstore. And our dimensions might be profit or sum, and our value might be you know, units sold or price in euros. But nevertheless, we've got our data there on the left. And what we can do first is introduce an index. One, two, three. One, two, and three, these are the points that we want to plot on the circle. And we also need to understand the total number of points. And in this case, A, B, and C, we've got three points. Let me show you visually what we're doing here. So we've got a circle. We've got our three points, A, B, and C. So maybe we can call this one A, this one B, and this one C. Now, these don't actually exist on a circle yet. All we've done is we've just indexed them as one, two, and three. We know that three is the total number. So what do we do with this? We need to calculate the degrees. If you remember back just a couple of minutes ago, I mentioned that when we have a unit circle, we can simply use cosine and sine on the angle to calculate the coordinate. But first of all, we need to calculate the degrees from origin. So when we have a circle such as this, oops, we need to calculate, if this is the origin, here's one point, we need to calculate how many degrees this is. We also need to calculate how many degrees this is. So you do it from the origin, so you know we've got our theta degrees. And then finally, we've got our final angle here. Again, we're just trying to figure out how many degrees the, the coordinate is from the angle. So we see here, for each degree, we give it 120 degrees, and then we times that by the index, one, two, and three, and that gives us our degrees from origin. Here on the right, we can see uh, 120 degrees, 240 degrees, and 360 degrees. And here, I've just simplified it. This is what we're looking to create. We're looking to create data, the data points for the angle. From that point, we simply need to calculate the x, y. And as we saw in the unit circle, to calculate the x, y, when the radius is arbitrary or one, all we need to do is use cosine on the angle. And that provides us with our x coordinate, and we can use sine on the angle to provide our y coordinate. So we can see here in, let's take item A, which is this dot right here. We know it's 120 degrees from the origin. So we know this is 120. And then when we cosine 120, so this, this right here will simply be cosine 120. 
it gives us minus 0 0.5. And when we sign 120, it gives us 0 0.86. So that gives us our value here. We simply do the same thing for the other points. And hey presto, we've got our circle. Now this small example was just three points. So let's have a look at doing it in Tableau with more than three points. So here we go. We've got our Tableau dashboard right here and we've got some items. So I've just arbitrarily named these item one, item two, et cetera, 100, 150. Again, this could be anything, properties, sales, uh, t-shirts, you name it. So as I mentioned first, we need to calculate an index. So let's create that index. So to create an index, it's fairly simple. We simply use the index function, zoom in. This is a table calculation. We want to com compute, compute this on the level of item. So let's create that and check it in here. I'm gonna make this table first and then we'll see it in the circle itself. So you can see here, we've got all our points and there's 200 of them and we index them to 200. The second step is calculating our total number of points. In this case, we know it's 200. You can use an LOD, a level of detail calculation to do this, if you would like. So let's just do LOD max and points. So level of detail calculation is just an aggregation. So let's say, that, let's find the max. And we want, oh, we want the count, sorry, of items. And then we want the max. So let's put this in. Oh, I'm not sure what I did there. Let's just quickly fix this up with my blue Peter one I did earlier. So there we go, grab this. There it is. So we see here we've got our LOD max points. So we have an index of one and then max number of points is 200. An index of two, max point of 200. So why we're calculating this is so we can equally distribute our points along a circle. So what do we do from there? Well, we simply need to calculate the angle. I'm just going to take this angle calculation that I made earlier and I'm going to slot it in. Let's remove radians. As I mentioned, we'll be working in degrees. So I'm going to zoom in to make this a little bit easier. So we've got our angle here, 0, 1.8, 3.6. And if I scroll down, we've got our final value of 358.2. That's great. We know there's 360 degrees in a circle, so we can assume that these are equally distributed. And you can see there's a difference of 1.8 between each of these, 1.8, 1.8, 1.8. 368.2 plus 1.8 is 360. So all these points are gonna equally distribute across the circle. So then we simply need to make the X and Y coordinates. So we need to first convert this to radians, as I mentioned, Tableau only except radians. And we know there is two pi radians in a circle and 2 pi is approximately 6.3, so that's great. Then we simply need to do our x and y coordinates. So let's do x coordinate. So we take the angle. Let's take our angle. This is a single layer. And to get the x, remember, we just need to do the cosine on that angle. Let's drop this in. Looks like we've got our x coordinates. Let's duplicate that and get our Y coordinates. To get the Y coordinates, again, super simple. We just need to use the sign. That gives us our Y. Let's drop that in. And we can see here, we've got quite a nice table. Zoom in again, where we've got, say, let's look at item 11. Item 11, this has got our value. Maybe we want to size our circles, our dots based on that. We've calculated our index. We've got our max. 
We've given an angle that's equally distributed across the circle, and then using cosine, we've prov got being provided with the x, which in this case is one, and using sine, we've been provided with the y coordinate. So let's put this into an actual circle. So let's first of all take our x. We can put that in our columns. Then let's take our y and put that in our rows. And see here, we've just got this singular mark, just a single dot. So we need to break this over open into the items. I'm going to take my item field and I'm going to put it onto my detail tab. And now we can see here, you can actually see in the bottom left of Tableau, we've got 200 marks there. However, hold on a minute, they're in a singular point. Now this is just because the index is not calculating across the item in this case. So we can just go to the X and we're going to compute using the item. Now this is not computing the angle, it's just doing the index calculation that it's based on. So let's compute using item the x, we split out these points and compute using item for the y. And there you go, we have a circle. And as I mentioned, let's say you have profit or sales or number of t-shirts sold, I can put the value on the size, or I could put the value on the color. And now we have a bit of freedom to do interesting things with a simple circle. Now I'm gonna show you a little bit more about the art that's possible with this because radials can get really cool. I just wanted to introduce this basic single circle to introduce you to the fundamental concepts of how we make radials in Tableau. But what can we do from here? So again, here's one I made earlier. Here is our single circle. And I've just put the value on size just because you know it looks quite aesthetically pleasing. But we can also make spirals, which are pretty cool. Let's have a little look into the spiral. I'm gonna break out these calculations to show you. So here, what we've got is we've got our radians. So ignore that, that's just a conversion. So Tableau knows how to do the trick. We've got 720 which is interesting because we know there's 360 points in a circle. Why have I used 720? Let's look at that in a second. We've got this max count of items. We can ignore this. This is simply plotting the points. And in terms of this minor, minus spiral index, we can kind of ignore that. We've just given uh, the index star a zero rather than minus one. Um, I'll talk about that in a bit. And then finally, minus 300. We don't need to worry about that too much. I'll get to that in a second. What I want to focus on for now is this 720. This is really cool. And, you know, I'm not going to explain it perfectly, but I'm going to show you visually what it means. So we can see here in this circle that how many circles are here? We've got one circle, there's one, and then we've got two circles. Interestingly, we also know that 720 degrees is the sum of two circles. Let me make us 360 degrees. Let's apply that. How many circles are here now? That looks like just one circle. Obviously, it's broken into a start spiral, but that's one circle. So what you can do is you can start plotting the area. Let's do 1040, which is three circles. You can start plotting the area in which the radial is plotted over. So this is one, you know, and then two, and then three. You get the picture. Additionally, this minus 300, let's do minus 500. We can see the circle has rotated. Let's do minus 350, uh, 350, whoops, 350. We can see it slightly shift along, let's do 400. And you can see we've shifted down a bit there. But the point of what I'm trying to make is this is a simple fundamental calculation for the angle, but you can play around with its little bits of it to actually change how your radial looks. You can change the rotation. You can change how far it goes in and out. You can change um, you know, the, the actual angle itself. So in the spiral radial, a key concept is using the square root. 
But if instead of using the square root, I use just the index, you can see we've kind of got a slightly different spiral here. It look, it's got a slightly different angle to it. It's not that perfect circle. And then finally, let me show you a few more of the possibles. We don't have to do over 360 degrees. You can see here we have multiple layers that don't go all the way around. We, we can show these at different levels. It's almost like a dot bar chart, but with some curvature. We can change the, how the layering works. So here, I think we've got about six layers, but the distance between the layers is based on our profit. So we can start actually using our data to change the radial. Then we can start working with lines. We can start doing some cool things. You know, this might be the start of, um, you know, maybe maybe a little uh, one of those charts that we use in FIFA. So we can start playing around and layering the radials on top of each other. And then finally, one that's probably been seen a lot before, we can do a radial column chart. And this is just the start. You can really use your imagination to go wild. You can combine these with chord charts. You can combine these with bars. You can combine these with shapes. You can do some really, really cool things. All you need to remember is those fundamental calculations that we make with a circle, and then you can really take it from there. So just to recap, make sure you structure the data. Make sure you have your data in the right format. For me, I wanted my items as the level of granularity of my dots, my item A, B, and C, you know, my T-shirts. I wanted to keep my, my, my profit, let's say for my T-shirts, 150, 150, and I wanted to use that to change the size of my dots. Then you need to create your calculations. Remember, there's a couple of steps to this. We need to first choose the number of points. We need to plot them over however many degrees, and then we need to work out the angle and the X, Y. And then finally, as I mentioned, to your heart's content, you can format this, you can make these look really cool, and you can take these to the next level. These are very basic radials. I've seen some amazing stuff out there. You know, be wild, create some amazing things. And just one final note, all these calculations and the radials themselves, I've got a workbook on Tableau Public. You can download this and all the calculations I've showed you are in there. So you don't have to create this from scratch. You can unpick this workbook and you know, start creating from there. There's also some notes on the calculations we've gone through today. So I'm gonna finish this here. And I just wanna say thank you everyone for attending this. Um, as Kate mentioned, if you have questions, please post them. I'm sure we'll be answering them now. But I hope you enjoyed that and have some fun with radios. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks so much, James. Um, it's great to get that in-depth dive into radios. Uh, we'll all be messing around with Tableau now. Um, cool. Yeah, as James said, if you have any questions, you can pop them into the Q&A function there at the bottom of your screen. Um, someone was already asking about a recording for this session. Yes, it will be available on Tableau's um, YouTube channel. So all you need to do is type Tableau into the search bar, um, as I was saying, and just find it there in the next few days. Um, so yeah, um, I don't have any questions yet, but I actually do have one for Soha. Um, Soha, so like, I know this isn't the first, dy dynamic zo zoning isn't the first time Tableau has had a feature that, a feature, pardon me, that allows you to hide certain features. Um, but what do you think are the advantages of dynamic zoning over some of the previous show and hide features? Um, I think we'll probably see a lot of it more in a corporate setting because a lot of the time you've got different stakeholders from different levels. We're looking to drill down into things in various ways. So, for example, sometimes a lot of the time you ask to build a dashboard that's for managers but also for the junior people in the team and they're asking for different things so okay. you can use dynamic zone visibility to create a view that's suitable for multiple different people and then on top of that you can use like user rules for that as well and add filtering based on who's viewing it and what they will be allowed to see as well based on that okay so that's really interesting so you could use the same dashboard essentially for the CEO as well as for the intern, but you can obviously 
put security features in place that allows the you know the kind of the confidential information only be available to very senior level people yeah all exactly. right okay well that's really cool save a lot of headaches yeah and, and also peace of mind for people when creating their dashboards yeah that they're going to be secure also like i have already used it in for a client where they had a product category that's nearly about to be like expired but until the expiry date, they still wanted the ability to see it and then also like not see it. Okay. You've got situations like that as well. Okay, cool. So plenty of use cases, basically. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Soha. Um, yeah, don't appear to have any other questions now. Sign of good presentations. You've covered everything off already. Um, cool. I'll just give it a, another minute. Um, let anyone put any questions that they have. Um, but in the meantime, I actually have one for James. Um, just curious, how long did it take you to feel like you were really comfortable with radi radial charts um, in terms of the learning process? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. So the majority of my time figuring this out was actually figuring out that fundamental formula for the radials. Once I figured that out and I understood what was going on, then it was really easy. I could take it from there. Once I understood for that singular circle what to do, making the spirals, making the multi-layer and so forth, that became a lot easier. And that's why I wanted to share that formula and just introduce a couple of those concepts. You know, if I minus a value at the end, it rotates the circle. If I divide by, if I divide the, the total points, I have 360 degrees or 720 degrees. That's just the total number of circles the area is plotted over. Once I had those concepts in my head, it was pretty easy. But getting to that point took a bit of time. So, you know, hopefully from this presentation in the workbook, people can kind of cut out that, you know, understanding the concepts time and actually focus just on let's make some cool stuff in Tableau. So you've done the work for everyone? Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. I'm sure it will help for sure. Great. Um, cool. I don't think we have any other questions. So um, yeah, going to finish up. Thanks so much to both Soha and James. Those presentations were excellent. Uh, really great to get a deep dive on radial charts and dynamic zoning. Um, so thank you for your time. Cool. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.